Now that we've set up our simple server, let's go ahead and create a simple database where we're going to persist our user accounts. So to do that, we're going to be making use of Flask SQL Alchemy, which is simply an object relational mapper that's going to wrap around the SQL Alchemy ORM. This will be useful as it's going to help us to create classes that help us to easily define our database tables. So what I'll do is to come right here in a new terminal, still within our virtual environment. I'm going to run pip install flask sql alchemy. So I'll say pip install flask sql alchemy. I think I've even spelled it wrong. It's going to be flask sql alchemy. So i come right here and add the L, so this will go ahead and install Flask SQL Alchemy within our virtual environment. So now that SQL Alchemy has been installed or Flask SQL Alchemy, the first thing we shall do is to define our database URI. So the database URI is going to point to the specific database that we're going to be using for our simple application. So what we're going to do is to go and define that within our .env file. So to do that, we shall just come right here and say Flask underscore, and then we shall add our SQL alchemy and this is actually going to be sql alchemy database uri so let me actually fix this so it's going to be database uri and in here we are going to provide a uri so we're going to keep it simple by using sqlite so i'll say sqlite and then i'll basically provide these three slashes and then provide the name of the database that we want to be using so in this case I mean to call our database or well, let's actually just call it API or well, let's say uh, app dot db or well, let's actually just call it db dot sqlite 3. So this will be our sqlite 3 file. And once I've been able to do that, then I'll also add flask. I'm going to call this uh, flask sql alchemy echo. So this will be useful as it will allow us to basically go ahead and see the SQL that will be logged every time we are trying to carry out a transaction in our database. So in this case, we shall set that to true. And once we've been able to do that, then the next thing is going to be to initialize Flask SQL Alchemy to work within our database or within our Flask app. So if we want to do that, the next thing we're going to do is to go within our main.py. So we need to create our SQL Alchemy instance. Now I prefer to create a new file and I'm going to call this our extensions.py. So this is where we shall create multiple instances of our, or oh, this is where we're actually going to create an instance of each of the extensions we shall be integrating onto our app. So we're going to start with Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'll say from Flask, SQL Alchemy, we are going to import our SQL Alchemy class. So I'll come right here and say DB is going to be equal to our SQL Alchemy instance. So once we've been able to create this instance, now we need to integrate it within our app. So what I'll do is to go then I main.py and there I'll have to come right here. And all I'll do is to say DB. So after the config, I'll just come and say db, so I have to import it first. So to import that, I'll have to say from. So in this case, we're going to import from our extensions. We are simply going to come and import our db instance. And once we've done that, we shall just come right here and say db.init app. So this will basically take in the application instance. So this is basically like initializing our flask application so we shall just come and say we shall provide our flask instance that we've created right here so now that this is done let's check on our server our server is running right now so the next thing we're going to do is to create 
a simple database model for our account. So to do that, I'm going to come and create a new file. And I'm going to call this file models.py. And once we've been able to do that, we are now going to go ahead and define our database model. So this database model is going to be created from our DB instance. So we shall import it, we shall say from extensions we are going to import our database and once we've imported that we are now going to come and say we're going to create a class and this class is going to be our model class for our users so we shall call this our user class and it's going to inherit from db.model so once we've been able to do that then we're going to define the different fields but we can also provide some sql alchemy specific attributes such as a table name so we're going to provide one and we shall call this our users table and now here we can go ahead and basically set up our different attributes so let's start with the id so our id is going to be our unique field that's going to identify each user in our database table so to begin we're going to call this our column and what we're going to do is to save this as a string so we shall provide the type as db.string and since this is going to be our primary key, we shall also specify the primary key is going to be equal to true. And once we've been able to do that, then we're also going to provide a default primary key. Now, since we're using a string, we'd like to use a string that's going to be unique for every user we shall have within our database table. And to do that, we're going to be making use of UUIDs. So the easiest way we can be able to set one random unique ID is by basically setting a default. So we shall set our default. And then we are going to create a string instance. Now in here, what we're going to do is to call a function that will be responsible for generating these unique IDs. So for us to be able to do that, I'm going to come and let operate here and I'll say from UUID, we are basically going to come and import our UUID for function. So I'll just come right uh, within our string instance right here. And then what I have to do is to say that we are going to simply call that UUID function. So this will basically create a new UUID. So once we've been able to do that, then let's define another field. So we're going to have a username. And this username is going to be equal to db dot column and we shall have db dot string so this will also be a string so we're going to also add some constraints right here such as the nullable constraint so we shall say nullable is going to be equal to false another thing we're going to do is to provide our email so we shall say that our email is going to be db dot column and we shall also say db dot string and in this case, we are going to also say that we do not want this to be now. So we shall say analable is going to be equal to false. So we're also going to set up our password field. And this is going to be our db.column. And in here, we are going to basically set up our db.text. So we shall just basically make this be a text field. So once we've been able to do that, then the next thing is going to be for us to basically create our database tables. So before we create our database tables, we shall also need to basically set up a way for us to get a human readable representation of our database objects. To do that, what we're going to do is to come right here and say dev dunder repre. And in this case, we shall say that we shall have self now, each time we call an object, it's going to be represented in this string format. So we shall return and then I'll say F. So in this case, shall say that we are going to have our user. And in this case, shall have self.username. So every time we shall query for our users, they will be returned in this specific form. So now that you've been able to set up this simple database table, of this database model let us go ahead and create an actual database with that specific table now 
once you've been able to integrate her app we're going to get access to the db object within our flask cli utility now the beauty with flask is it provides for us a flask cli that can be able to help us to do different things so if we go within our terminal right here and say flask we can now see that this is going to actually return a lot of options but as long as you've been able to set a flask application so we need to actually set up one and this can actually be done by saying flask you can provide the flask app or what we can actually do is to export the flask apps just like we did in a previous part so you can say export flask app being main.py and then we can this can say flask shell and this will give us an interactive console where we can be able to just simply play around with python and also our flask application now if we want to access the db instance all we have to do is say db and that will give us access to the db instance that we created so once we've been able to create it the next thing is going to be for us to basically go ahead and create our database table so for us to create our database table the first thing we're going to do is to basically import our models so we shall say from models sorry for that so this is going to be from models we are going to go ahead and import our user object so once we've been able to do that we are now going to call a specific function on our db instance or our db object so it's going to be responsible for creating these tables in an actual database so to do that we shall just come and say db dot create underscore all and once we've called that function when you press enter since we set sql alchemy equal to true we're going to be able to see the sql that will be executed now let's go ahead and basically explore the database that we've created so i'm going to open up my db browser for sqlite <coughs> and i'll open where my simple database is so i'll leave a link in the description to this specific app that can help you to basically see your database so i'll navigate to where we have our database so i'll go to coding and then I'll basically go to where our database is so this is our db.sqlite3 and when you open this we now see that we have our simple user database created for us right here so for now we've been able to create our user database